Hey guys, it's Ivy, and today I'm here with a critique video. A couple weeks ago, I asked some of my followers and patrons to submit some art pieces that they would be willing to have me critique and paint over in this video. So thank you guys for that. <laughs> Each one takes under 30 minutes, so these will be quick and I'll just be talking through kind of my thought process throughout it and hopefully it can give you some ideas on what you would do next. So let's get right into it and we're starting with Aang. This piece was submitted by Pixie Sticks. She is also here on YouTube. She does really cute vlogs and stuff, just, um, you know, studio vlog style. So I would definitely recommend checking her out if you're into that kind of thing. For each of these pieces, I sort of had a rough idea of what I wanted to focus on the most um, as far as what I thought might help improve it. So for this one, I was really focusing on the skin tone and shading and sort of softening that up and bringing in some different colors into the skin tones. So I'm really changing the shading here quite a bit because the lighting seems to be very diffused. It's an outdoor setting. I even brought in a little bit of the sky color so there's a little bit of a blue tint like on his head. <laughs> and I'm sort of just changing up how the shadows are laying um, just whatever suits my eye, really. The original drawing had very cartoonish kind of colors in that the skin tone didn't have a lot of variation in it. But I think that you can bring in uh, new colors very subtly and it will still have that cartoony feeling without making it too realistic. But it will bring some interest. So really like bringing some pink and red into the nose and cheeks. Uh, and lips is kind of bringing this character more to life. I also really wanted to change a little bit how this teeth grit expression was and just push that um, in its own way. I think the expression was a little bit out of Pixie's comfort zone so I definitely commend you for that. I can see that you were pushing with the original. I just think you know practice makes perfect and learning how to incorporate those exaggerated expressions into your style definitely takes some practice. But I looked at some teeth gritting uh, references and I found that the lip shape at the top was a little bit curved down for my liking so I brought that up a little bit. And also like showing some gums that really just kind of exaggerates the sort of snarl <laughs> moment and it becomes a little bit less timid looking and more determined. Mostly I just blended things out and I changed a couple shapes here and there. Then I'm definitely feeling better about the face. I knew that the original drawing was pretty good. Like it was spot on. It was probably just issues with shading because I did a little overline like kind of drawing where the like eyes and all the points were. You probably saw it a couple times. Um, and the drawing looked really good. It was really just about the shading that was kind of throwing me off. This hand I felt could be a little bit more dynamic so I added a little bit of motion blur and this wind shape was just too solid for me. I kind of wanted to break it up and I felt like that feels more windy when it's kind of in different you know, sections. So I'm kind of playing with that, figuring out how to move that um, and keep the composition in a way I like. When it comes to magic effects, I do like having hard edges in there but then softening out by erasing, erasing, erasing one edge. I also brought some of the sky color into his shirt just a little bit more of that bringing it in and here I'm checking the values on the hand because I'm noticing this finger is so close to the mountain without that um like wind behind it quite so strong and as I start playing with the hand I'm like hmm having some kind of issue with it a little bit. I extend these fingers because I feel like the fingers are a little bit too um, all the same length. I thought about separating these two um, but I think it just I don't know I couldn't quite feel out what was bothering me about the fingers but I tried to push the perspective a little bit so it felt more like the fingers were kind of starting at the base hand and the base hand is like angled so bringing those fingers in kind of makes it feel a little bit more forward. That pretty much brings this one to a close. So here's the before and the after transition. Hope that gives you some ideas. Let's move on to the next one. 
This one was submitted by my friend Kogo or Kogo Sayajin over on Twitter. This is their cute, <laughs> I think they're lesbian love ladies, which is <laughs> very sweet. Um, my notes for this one were very shading centric. Um, I did fix a couple of shape things in here or, or change them. No art is subjective, so maybe I shouldn't say fix, but I changed them. Um, and uh, But mostly my notes were more about the shading. Um, the shading is kind of very monochrome tone. Sorry, I'm not sure which one is the correct one, but it's very... The shadows kind of just go into like a darker color of the base color. And they also tend to be very tight against where the shadow would start. And those were definitely, I can see Kogo trying like to figure out where those shadows are, but mostly they need to be drawn out and then added some highlights in as well. So what I'm doing is again, bringing color into the skin tone. I usually use reference if I'm unsure about skin tone to make sure that I get it accurate as I can. So I'm really just bringing some variation in so you can kind of even see that the highlight is it's it's pretty neutral highlight actually but then there's like a little bit of pink around the cheek and it goes into kind of a purple shadow and I'm just softening that all out. I'm adding a nice dark shadow to this under hairline kind of establishing somewhat of a light source that was kind of another hard thing about this piece was that there wasn't really an established light source for it. So it kind of ended up again being sort of diffused. It's kind of coming from above a little bit behind them now. I change uh, this hair shape a little bit so it frames the face and the hair has a little bit more flow to it. It's a little bit less straight, feels a little bit more natural. And I'm just kind of changing some shapes, bringing in more highlights more color. I sort of do a red line of the anatomy because I feel like, I don't know, it's it's just falling a little bit strange to me. I want to make sure that those torsos really have as much space as they would really take up. So I'm bringing the shoulders down a little bit, bringing the breasts down a little bit, and I'm adding a thumb because, I mean, I can see like it could be curved in, but I think just compositionally it will kind of bring and lead a view up to um, the other woman's face if there's like a thumb there it kind of just helps that sort of framing as well. So me talking about broad shadows is definitely you know incorporating right now even though it starts kind of rough like this airbrush I put in for the highlight right when it starts out it looks a little weird like it definitely takes some time and some work to smooth everything out and kind of find where it's supposed to be. This piece is a really good example of thinking about things in very detail-oriented ways. Uh, I can just kind of tell by the way that things are rendered. Like there's obviously lots of love and detail put into the small things, the details. Um, but the overall big picture gets a little bit um, lost, like the thumbnail view of it is not as clear as I would like it to be. Both of these characters' skin tone definitely lean to the side of yellower than I usually prefer. I like to bring in quite a lot of warmth and pinkness into my skin tones. This could be a character choice, but because I'm not sure I'm really trying to give it more of a natural tone and make her look all, you know, blushy and cute and in love. <laughs> I'm doing a couple of changes on this face. Um, of course, this is the one that's more in view, so there's a little bit more to do here. I want to pull those lips out just a little bit so they kind of connect up with the nose in a way that's more common and just give this nose, um, like the shape as far as the absolute outline of it goes is probably fine, but because there was this really bright highlight right on the nose tip and the outline there died, it really brought out that point to like an extreme that stops looking realistic. 
So I softened that out a little bit shading wise and I tried to preserve the shape of, you know, a cute pointy little nose, but giving it kind of a softer, more realistic kind of shading. Now I didn't use a reference for this ear. <laughs> so um, this is probably not the perfect ear, but I just, um, you kind of don't really need that much detail in ears for them to look more realistically like an ear. Um, but I would definitely suggest doing a study of that one day. I could probably stand to do more ear studies as well. There were a couple issues with the hand. It was a little bit small for me compared to their... Actually, I think what really it was is that their heads are quite big um, compared to the rest of their body. Uh, but it's a little bit hard to... I don't know, with this pose it was easier to just kind of fake it and size up the hand. But the um, the like fingernail rotation is a little bit um, like I, I think because the hand palm looks like it's pretty straight on the fingernails also need to match that angle of the uh, the hand so they should you know not quite have so much angle to them because this looks a little bit more like it's curved more than the rest of the hand matched. And I just brought in a little bit of color there too, like a little bit of knuckle highlight and stuff. It just brings it to a little bit more depth. At this point, I'm feeling pretty good about how the girls look, but I don't feel like they pop out very much from the background. The value is just too close and <laughs> it takes me a minute to kind of figure out what I even want for the background because it's a bit tough when you have two contrasting skin tones, like you want the characters to pop out from the background, but it's not just like one's lighter than the other, <laughs> you know, it's, you got to think about it a little bit more. So I decided I would try a kind of rim light effect that really makes the characters pop out from the background very strongly. So I kind of just do an outline um, very roughly on the outside and then I'll soften it. I'm not being super detail oriented on these, you know, critiques because it's more just about the idea. So it's not super clean, but it's just to give you the visual effect of what you can do to pop that contrast out. Like once I get that uh, drawing down of the rim light, I duplicate it, blur it put it on like color dodge or linear dodge or something like that and I changed the background so everything's very warm it feels very romantic and intimate and just sweet <laughs> I'm just about done here I'm just softening up this light around them a little bit I think playing with curves and the vignette just a tiny bit and we're pretty much done here's our before and after all right, on to the next one. This final critique was submitted by Pixadoo. Number one, <laughs> not number one, the number one, Pixadoo one. <laughs> okay, did you get that? My note for this one was pretty much just pushing lighting based. Now I think that I had a bit of a disadvantage um, on this one from the get go because I think that this um, picture probably had a transparent background, but then Twitter sends it with a black one. So I think that against a white background, it probably already would have looked more intense. Um, but regardless, I still want to really push the values of dark in here. Well, and light, but just pushing in there. So for this kind of stuff, it's so like you have to get it right to make it look right and it actually the base picture looks pretty damn good but I needed to grab a reference to see how to really blend in these dark shadows. Sometimes it's actually really beneficial to completely get rid of details in shadow and just block it into one color. It just like removes that detail from the viewer's eye. You really don't need that information. So a lot of what I wanted to do here was just get rid of the detail in the shadow area and add some detail to the highlight areas. So I wanted to get more like crisp, sharp highlights on the skin 
and just push back the other side. And I always use reference for this kind of work. I feel pretty lucky that I was able to even find a reference that kind of fit this character, so thank you Pinterest. <laughs> that was really lucky. Um, but I think that it's really was just about pushing into that, so I'm kind of looking at my reference, I'm seeing where those shadows fall, and kind of getting rid of detail and adding darkness to these shadows. I can't quite tell what is happening with this uh, furry situation. Um, <laughs> like, I'm not really sure what the outfit is supposed to be. I I kind of don't care, like even in the, in the pic, I'm kind of like the original. I, I'm fine with leaving that pretty not detailed, but I just wanted to bring a little bit of like this shadow into it. I felt like it would make it feel a little bit less flat. I wanted to make some things um, a bit more attention grabbing in this piece, uh, very specifically like the eye and the teeth. I wanted to bring more attention to the face, especially because this kind of metal, um, you know, neck thing, sorry, I don't know what it's called, but it has the highest point of contrast in the picture at the moment, so your eye naturally kind of wants to be pulled down there. I admit that the shading or the highlight on that thing looks very good. It just needs to be balanced out with having something that's also kind of bringing light into the facial area because that's where you really want your viewer to focus in on, right? And your eye is going to be drawn to the areas with the most contrast and the most detail. Now, I don't think that I was able to quite recover the best on this aspect, but I will say this as far as advice for future portraits, is that once you kind of have something planned that is very monochrome, even if it is like the character, it can be hard to get out of that. Like this picture is very just brown and gray and neutral. And it would probably be more interesting to look at if it had more of a contrasting color situation happening in it. Like, there are more colors. Um, I mean, monochrome has its place, so it depends on what you're doing exactly. But I do think about that when I'm doing color portraits. I usually want to add something in. I could have maybe helped it by making the background like a cool tone and pushing the warm in the portrait itself, um, but either way, it, it ended up a little bit monochrome, so I would probably try to avoid that so completely. I like to get in another color in there. Here I am just checking the values again and still struggling with how bright this um, like metal piece at the bottom is compared to the eye, so I'm bringing some highlights into the face and toning down that metal at the bottom was at this point that I thought it just looked a little bit bland in some way and I just wanted to bring something in there that really was a little bit more expressive, whether it be like the lighting or the expression itself or anything. So I decided to really push this kind of, he looks happy, he's really smiling. I really just wanted to give him more of this grin, I even used liquify a little bit to pull that mouth area up in that eye, you smizing. <laughs> I felt like the original eye was a bit large as well, which could have been a, you know, trait of the character. I don't know if this is like a particular race or anything, but I thought he might benefit from just a little bit of sizing down. And he's really got an e-girl wing line, so, you know, that I'm, I like it. <laughs> I gave him some serious eyeliner. All right, here's my before and after for this one, and that pretty much wraps up my critiques for this round anyway. Thank you guys so much to everyone that submitted or is even just watching this. I would really like to do another one of these sometime, however I'm very busy, um, but let me know if you guys are interested in more of this style of video because it's a, one that I really like to watch myself. I watch a lot of um, those Cynics uh, Paint Over Pal videos, which is definitely what this is inspired by. Um, but I just think it's 
the kind of video that you can always have more of and explore more, especially when, you know, we don't always get it right. Like, I'm not an expert. This is student helping student. So I always really appreciate when you guys are down for that. And it also helps me um, practice my own kind of way of teaching and you know, scrutinizing something that isn't my own can sometimes be really eye-opening. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this taught you something. hope you had fun and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!